So far, you have heard mainly about idealized systems. In realistic samples, there are impurities, defects, and other forms of disorder. Of course, you may want to know what the effect of such disorder on topological phases is. To prepare for answering that question, I would like to discuss what effect this order has on the wave functions of standard, topologically trivial systems. Let us start by trying to answer this question for the limits of weak and strong disorder. Following the Drude theory, weak disorder is characterized by a finite conductivity sigma. But there is a catch. There are quantum corrections that become larger than the Drude conductivity for a large enough system size in one and two dimensions. For strong disorder, if the disorder strength is much larger than the bandwidth, electrons become trapped by the disorder. We say that they are localized. Quantum effects such as tunneling, change this picture quantitatively, but not qualitatively. The scaling theory of localization provides a way to interpolate between these two limits. Before going to the scaling theory, it is important to note that all wave functions at more or less the same energy must be either localized or extended, and that they have the same localization length if they are localized. To see this, imagine the opposite a localized wave function coexisting with an extended wave function at almost the same energy. That cannot be a generic situation because any random perturbation will strongly hybridize these two wave functions and turn both of them into extended ones. The scaling theory does not look at the conductivity sigma, but at the conductance g of a block of linear size L. In three dimensions, such a block is a cube, in two dimensions, it's a square. In one dimension, it is a line segment. In the Drude theory, conductivity and conductance are related as conductance G is sigma times L to the power D minus 2. The first important ingredient of the scaling theory is an essential relation between the conductance G and two energy scales characteristic of a block. The mean spacing, delta, between energy levels, and the Thaulis energy, the inverse of the time tau escape until an electron somewhere inside this block will have reached the boundary and escape. P Thaulis is h bar divided by tau escape. The Thaulis energy gives the broadening of a typical energy level in the block if the block is embedded in a larger system. The ratio G is E Thaulis over delta is known as the Thaulis conductance. You will learn that it is essentially the block's conductance, G, up to a factor of E squared over H, so small g roughly g divided by e squared over h. The Thaulis relation, g is e Thaulis over delta, describes to what extent wave functions are localized. If g is much bigger than 1, the coupling of our block to the rest of the system broadens levels much more than their spacing. Hence, this coupling is a strong perturbation, and that means that wave functions must be extended. On the other hand, if g is much smaller than 1, a change in the boundary conditions obviously affects energy levels only very little. This means that a generic wave function does not see the boundary, so it is localized. The dimensionless conductance g is itself a function of the block size l. If the block size is smaller than the localization length, assuming that there is a localization length, g will be larger than 1. If l is larger than the localization length, g will be smaller than 1. The second ingredient of the scaling theory is a famous ansatz by Abrahams, Anderson, Lichardello, and Ramakrishnan, also known as the Gang of Four. This ansatz says that in order to find how the dimensionless conductance G changes with the block size L, it is sufficient to know G itself, 
a little bit more quantitatively in written and written in terms of a differential equation. This answer says d log g d log l is a function beta which depends on g only. This ansatz is known as single parameter scaling. How does this function beta look like? One can argue how it should look, look like in the limits of large and small g, and then interpolate, assuming that nothing spectacular happens in between. For large g, the Rude theory tells you how g scales with L, and it tells you that beta of g is d minus 2. So here, on the horizontal axis, it's log g, and the Rude theory tells you that beta is d minus 2, so it's minus 1 for d is 1, 0 for d is 2, and it's 3, sorry, it's 1 for d is 3. If you look at the quantum corrections for d is 2, you actually find that the beta function is slightly negative for the orthogonal and unitary class, and that it is positive for the syntactic class. On the other hand, for g much smaller than 1, in the localized regime, conductance depends exponentially on system size, and you find beta of g is log g plus a constant. Something like this. Interpolating between these limits, that gives this picture. For d is 1, something like that. For d is 2, orthogonal and unitary, something like this. Symplectic, more like this. And for d is 3, looks like that. From this quite simple picture, a few very important conclusions can be drawn. First, the scaling theory predicts that in one dimension and in two dimensions, except for the symplectic class, eventually all states become localized for arbitrarily weak disorder. Because if beta is negative, g becomes smaller if system size increases. So the flow is towards small g. On the other hand, in three dimensions, as well as in two dimensions for the symplectic class, both the metallic phases and the localized phase are stable. Because beta is positive if g is large, meaning that at larger system sizes, conductance becomes even bigger, and beta is negative if g is much smaller than 1. The localized and metallic phases are separated by a point where beta is 0. At this point, there is a metal insulator transition. 